PPH-associated lower urinary tract symptoms are common in elderly men. Medical therapy is usually the first-line treatment. When medical therapy fails, more invasive surgical treatments have to be taken into consideration. TURP still represents the surgical gold standard in the treatment of benign prostatic obstruction. It is, however, associated with a substantial complication and re-intervention rate and is usually limited to prostate sizes below 80 ml. Perioperative risks are important. Considering the shift towards a more elderly and frail patient population, often managed by anticoagulant and antithrombotic agents, TURP can only be performed under general or spinal anesthesia and less invasive treatment alternatives are needed. The prostatic artery embolization is currently discussed as a minimal invasive technique alternative to TURP. The objective of this video is to illustrate the procedure and its technique, step by step. The procedure is performed by an interventional radiologist. A microcatheter is inserted into the internal iliac artery and advanced under X-ray guidance into the prostatic branches. Tiny beads are then injected into the prostatic arteries. The blood flow the prostate receives is significantly reduced, leading to an ischemic necrosis of the gland. The microcatheter is now retracted over the aortic bifurcation and the procedure is performed the same way on the other side of the prostate. During the next weeks, the prostate will shrink in size. This will eventually help to relieve some of the symptoms. The vascularization of the prostate originates from the prostate branches of the inferior vesicle artery. In reality, this is often not the case and the vascularization of the gland is highly variable. The intervention is performed on an angiographic interventional table. A variety of guide wires and endovascular microcatheters enable superselective access to the small prostatic artery branches. Interruption of the artery blood supply is achieved by polymethyl metacrylate embolization particles coated with a hydrophilic polyzine to prevent further clotting. The diameter of these particles can be selected but usually range between 100 and 400 micrometers for PAE. The smaller the diameter, the more pronounced the ischemic effect. Large caliber collaterals are occluded using titanium coils. Pre-interventional MRI or CT of the pelvic region is important to assess vascular conditions and help to estimate feasibility of the procedure. Renal insufficiency always has to be excluded. A structured approach in eight steps can facilitate the comprehension of the procedure and will now be discussed. As previously described, the intervention starts with the insertion of the urethral catheter. The catheter balloon is filled with diluted contrasts and helps with the orientation during the intervention. Afterwards follows the ultrasound guided puncture of the femoral artery and the infiltration of local anesthetics into the inguinal region. Pulsatile blood flow is objectified and a 5 French sheath is inserted into the vessel in selling a technique using a terumo guide wire. With a 4 French omniflush catheter, aortic bifurcation can be crossed over from the right side to the left. Helpful landmarks are the balloon of the transurethral catheter and the tip of the endovascular catheter in the iliac bifurcation. The supposed location of the prostate is shown by the red circle. Here we demonstrate the contrast between the expected theoretical vascular anatomy of the left side and the actual anatomy from the overview and geography. Highlighted in red, there is the tiny artery who showed to be the inferior vesicle artery, and the circle shows the estimated location of the prostate. 
The microcatheter is now further advanced to the target region. This maneuver was impeded by vasospasms, which were successfully resolved with nitrous oxygen, and the access to the target region could be achieved. To confirm that our branch is the supplying artery of the prostate, a rotational angiography is performed. This technique functions like a CT scan, adding and layering the circumferential images of the pelvis. Here we see the coronary reconstruction of the prostate, confirming this branch as the supplying branch for the prostate. The correct position of the microcatheter is again verified. We can proceed to embolize the prostate with 100 micrometer beads. After mixing the particles with 2 ml contrast, the solution is injected very slowly to prevent a backflow. Backflow of particles may lead to misembolization and has to be avoided. The infusion will take around 15 minutes per side. A 20 ml syringe acts as a reservoir and the injection rate is controlled with a 1 ml syringe. A small remaining dorsal vascular branch could be successfully occluded with a titanium coil. After washing out the catheter with saline, we now objectify the absence of prostatic perfusion. After embolizing the contralateral right side, the arterial axis is closed with an angioseal system. After the intervention, the urinary catheter can be extracted and after mitration, the post-voidal residue is controlled and the patient can be discharged. NSAID should be prescribed to avoid urinary retention. Drawbacks of PAE have to be mentioned as well and include limited application in case of renal insufficiency, misembolization leading to bladder and rectal wall necrosis, and the high exposure to radiation doses. It is a technically demanding procedure. Heterogeneous vascular conditions and collaterals worsen the situation. In conclusion, we can say that prostatic artery embolization in local anesthesia is feasible and safe in expert hands. The importance of collaboration between urologists and interventional radiologists has to be emphasized.